Well, hello, traders and investors. I'm L.A. Little, and this is your daily Neo TA wrap. We take a look at these markets, and we're doing it from a neoclassical perspective, and that means each day we're looking at it and saying, what happened today, and what does it tell us about the coming ones? I do the show four times a week, every Monday through Thursday. It's broadcast every before 10 o'clock Eastern Time. It's archived on YouTube, and it's under the channel L.A. Little. If you want to subscribe, reach up in the right-hand corner and do so anytime I push content. Then you'll get a notification. As far as what happened today, let's look at the markets up big, one and a half percent, or actually one and a quarter percent across the board. Pretty much a one percent on the S and P. What was moving it? Well, Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett tells us that he's got a big stake in Apple, and it and that uh, that news comes out before the bell. He's got a big, huge push off of it right across the board here, and uh, you sometimes wonder. How does this stuff work, right? Where, where do these guys come off telling us that they've got these big stakes? I mean, Carl Icahn did this a couple of years ago, you know, rode Apple up, uh, made his money, and then he told everybody he sold out. Now Warren Buffett comes in, does the same thing, market spikes higher as a result of it. You know, when you look at Apple, and, and supposedly this, this stake is a billion dollars, you know, something like a uh, million shares, and if if Apple or actually probably 10 million shares right at this price. If Apple really, if Buffett's been buying Apple, and let's say he's got a billion dollar stake, you know, where did he buy that? You know, did he buy it all yesterday, the day before down here at the bottom? No, it, that doesn't happen. That's not the way these things are done, right? They don't come in and buy a million shares right there, right? Somewhere he's, you know, he probably started a month ago. He started up here, bought some more there, bought some more probably on this dip, probably bought some more, and then the news gets released now that he has the big stake. Apple gets a 4% uh, rise, right? 3.71 today, big bump. Apple had already broke multiple swing points. And yes, it's not the typical thing that this thing is going to rise like this. You know, Apple's going to rise like this. And Apple is a special stock. I mean, they do make a lot of money, unlike many stocks. But but Apple's not going to go back you know, you know, it's just not going to go back up here to 105, and certainly not going to go back above 113. You know, maybe Buffett's got an average price of 110 or something, 17. Let's be generous, call it 105. You know, just to get back to even, probably is a significant rally at this point. And Apple has already shown us weakness near term. They've missed on their earnings for the first time. Yeah, they'll get a little bit of a, a breather because of who they are. But Apple is probably, you know, best case is probably going to work back up towards 100 and then going to come back down and test again. And so at this point, you know, it's pretty hard to believe that Apple is, is what's going to move this market higher all by itself. Now, of course, Apple, once it starts moving, just as you saw today, everything moves with it. You end up getting a bunch of takeaway bars. Let's go back to the S&P 500 and run through the indexes right quick. So takeaway bars is essentially when you take away whatever happened the prior day. On Friday, this market uh, caved in at the end. Today, it takes it all away. Less volume. You saw the same thing back here where you had a spike up and you took it away the next day. You know, you're getting a lot of chop up here at the top. And I'm sure there are plenty of folks out there that saying that this is a head and shoulders top. And that may be true, right? There could be some sort of a head and shoulders forming. If you go back and read the classic TA literature, you know, even this pattern doesn't really have the volume characteristics because you're supposed to see on a head and shoulders, you're supposed to see volume escalation over here, you know, on this shoulder, you don't see it. And then you're supposed to see less volume up here at the top, you don't see that. And then you're supposed to see volume escalation, especially when it breaks, right? And you haven't gotten to that point if that's what it's going to do. That's not happening, or at least it hasn't happened yet. If you flip this over and you go to the weekly chart, you could actually argue that you may have a head and shoulders you know, pattern uh, ready to form on the opposite side, right? You could have a head and shoulders down here. But, but then again, even this one, you know, if, if this were to come back, even this one doesn't have the correct um, TA um, you know, pattern, if you will, in terms of the volume. Yeah, you had one big spike down right everything else was small and look at look at this quote unquote head much more volume all the way across it right are you going to get less volume on this side potentially and if you do you know i'm sure if it comes back to this price point people are going to be talking about head and shoulders this way and if that's true right and if you do the measurements and all that nonsense then you're going to end up with a big break right that could take you much higher that may happen 
right? That pattern may fulfill. What's important is what it does when it comes back and what it comes into and what it's already done is it's tried to come into this bar, did it right here, was unable to break into it, volume was less, right? So you had less sellers than you had buyers at that particular price point and you got a little bump back up, right? When you get back up to this area, it's the opposite. Can you find more buyers at higher and higher price or not? That's neoclassical, right? I want to see supply and demand on the charts and I want to see it show me that in fact, you know, the buyers are willing to pay at higher and higher price or the sellers are willing to sell at lower and lower price. And when I see that, you know, then you've got something that will continue to move for a while versus for a day, which is what we're seeing right now as we look at the S&P. Uh, let's go back to the daily chart, right? It's just a lot of chop up here. There's no conviction right now, folks. Moving over to the NASDAQ. Uh, NASDAQ, of course, got a big bump as a result of Apple. And uh, as Apple uh, got the big bump today, the NASDAQ uh, gets a decent sized pop, one and a quarter percent almost. Uh, let's see what it's going back into. So you got the big volume bar over here at about 4,800. You've got these highs at about 4,811. You know, and NASDAQ will be telling us a little bit more if it gets over that 4,811 area, right? Because then you could have an ABCD structure of the top side. And if the buyers actually did come into this, right? You could get a little bit of a push, and that would take you a little bit higher. Let's see where that points to, right to the top of this bar. So that's probably the key bar right here, this wide price spread bar, 48.50. You get above 48.50, then something's probably going on. Um, yeah, anywhere from 48.50 to the top of the swing point high. So 48.50 to about 44.90. If you get above that, then yeah, you can go back to highs, make new highs. Uh, before you get there, it doesn't mean anything, really. Let's look at the rest of them. Uh, NDX looks almost the same, just a little bit stronger because of uh, Apple. And let's see what the Russell did. So the small caps, you got oil um, making new highs again. And oil is on a mission to 50, and that's helping these small caps. But uh, still not much here either. So no volume today across the board. Uh, just not a lot of conviction. Nobody wants to put a lot of money into this for whatever reason. And if they're not willing to put money in it, maybe you shouldn't either. Let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at the ox markets and see what the dollar did. I, I believe the dollar is going to be a key element here for the next uh, two, three, four, even five weeks until we get into the June meeting of the Fed. And the dollar's been trying to work higher. And uh, actually, they tried to push it down in the gap today, and we're unable to. And it looks like it closed. Yeah, closed right back over the lows from yesterday. This thing's going to try to go higher. If the dollar's going higher, it's going to push the euro down. It's going to push the uh, yen down to some extent. And uh, you're going to see the overseas markets try to work higher. Uh, that, in in turn, sh could put some pressure on some of the commodity stocks again. Uh, but for the most part, unless the dollar really starts to mojo higher, get over the swing point high, uh, those guys are probably going to levitate for now. Let's take a quick look uh, at the individual sectors because um, I'm curious if, the, if we really got some conviction in the sectors. So let's start with technology. That's where we should have seen it. So I'm going to pull up the XLK. We'll see what that one looks like. See if some volume came in on this thing or not. No, no volume. No volume in the XLK. It's not like they were uh, jumping all over themselves to buy this. You could get an ABCD structure if you get some more news tomorrow. XLK might mean something when it gets over 43 and a quarter. XLV, I saw the biotechs up big today. Of course, the biotechs have been the big loser in terms of sectors so far this year. XLV gets a pop. Again, no real volume coming into it. 70.34. Yeah, get over, get over that price point about 70 50 or so if you can get over that then maybe you got something going here so i don't i don't see the conviction here um it's certainly not off the news today xli the industrials these had been a big winner on the way up uh let's see if they got a takeaway bar 55 they did no volume though but um a takeaway bar they can try to pop a little bit higher uh, they're going into the highs here 55.73 and uh, they closed right at it. See this big bar, wide price spread bar, not wide price spread, but high volume. Top of it, 55.73. Where they close it, 55.73.
Folks, that's neoclassical. You're looking for volume bars, wide price spread bars, swing points that have significance, and you're seeing how they attack it. They didn't attack it very well. I don't think this market's going to get a huge push as a result of this. Let's see about energy since we had the big move in oil today. Nothing there either. Really nothing there either. So I don't see the big fuss. Uh, biotech was the big winner today. Let's see if there's some volume into that one. If it may be short covering, nothing. No volume in it either. Biotech can bounce into these two big bars. 260, 269, about 271. And I think that'd probably be the end of that one if it does. I don't see it out here. Looks to me like this market's going to play uh, uh, dead tomorrow. Flat, maybe slightly down. Uh, we do have Europe coming back online after uh, most of the, a few of those countries are on holiday today. And uh, we'll see if Asia pops. Asia didn't get much move um, yet. Uh, we'll see if they try to pop based on uh, the Apple news and the market moving up tonight. That's it for tonight. Coming to you from uh, southern uh, New Mexico. Have a great night, and I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.